Alright, so here is my uh, YouTube thumbnail tutorial, but you can apply this to banners and pretty much anything else because it's just going to be general Photoshop information. So this is how I usually start. I'll open up Photoshop and I'll create a, a new file and I always make, this is the YouTube standard right here for the thumbnail, it's got to be 1280 by 720 and you want to make sure the background is transparent. You can check all this other stuff to make sure it matches mine but it really doesn't matter. These things are the most too important. 1280 by 720 uh, RGB color and transparent. So then you click OK you're gonna get a brand new blank canvas here. So then let's switch over to Firefox or whatever internet browser you use and um, go to Google Images. And I know I'm going fast here, but you can pause and whatever if you need to verify the settings. Okay, so on Google Images, I just do a search for Battlefield Hardline, just those two words, unless I'm looking for something more specific. Then I'll use Search Tools, and I'll tell it that I want something really big, usually larger than 4 megapixels. So this gives me massive uh, graphics that I can play around with. So let's just pick um, this one is uh, huge. You can see it's 5,760 by 3240. So let's just pick this one and we'll say view image and it's huge. See if I go the actual size this dude's head is massive. So we don't want to just directly you know take uh, somebody else's screenshot or whatever. So we're just going to take part of it because it's just a picture of the game. So we're going to right click and say copy image. Then we're going to go into Photoshop and uh, we're going to paste it in or you can just I always just press control V to paste now it's a lot bigger than our canvas but that's kinda what we want so I'm gonna kinda move it around here I'm gonna use this tool at the top left this little grabber tool with the arrow that lets you just click and move things around so we're gonna move that around till we get the guys head like right here on the side so now we have if you look at this and you look at this, it's like two totally different things. Nobody's going to be able to tell where you got the image from. It's just a Battlefield Hardline game picture, all right? So after I do that, I usually like to put the Battlefield Hardline logo in. So let's go back to Firefox. Uh, let's go back to Google Images. I'm going to search for Battlefield Hardline logo. And I have all this stuff saved on my computer, but I'm going through it uh, in the different steps for you so, since you don't have this stuff. I'm going to look for a transparent logo, so I'm going to go to Search Tools, Color, and tell it I want transparency. So now all these logos are transparent. This one looks pretty cool, but this one is bigger, so I'm going to get the one that's big. Now when you do a transparent image, you can't copy and paste it, so we're going to right click it and we're going to save it somewhere on the, my computer. This time I'll just save it on my desktop as BF Logo. So then we'll go back into Photoshop and we're going to file, open, go to the desktop and open BF logo. So then you just want to select the whole thing, press control A or you can press, um, I think you can press edit and select all, but I don't know the, the all the things, I just use the keyboard shortcut. So press control A to select the whole thing and then copy it. Then you can close it, go back to your main image that we're working on here and paste it and then we're gonna drag it up to the top right and it should grab the when you get close it should grab to the top right so as you can see over here it created another layer every new design element we put in every new object needs its own layer so that you can move it around and make it put it in front and behind the other things the layer is simply an order like if we take layer one and move it above layer two we don't see that anymore because we just changed the order so the new things we want to put on top unless you want to get advanced and put things behind now this logo for Battlefield Hardline is a little big, so let's go edit, transform, well actually that's important, make sure we're on layer 2 first, so we make sure layer 2 is selected because that's our Battlefield Hardline logo layer. We'll go edit, we'll go transform, and we'll go scale. Now you can drag it around like this, but that's really going to distort it, so it looks all weird, so we're going to undo that. What you want to do is before you drag it, you want to hold the shift button down on your keyboard. When you hold shift down and drag it, it will keep the aspect ratio. So when you make it bigger and smaller, it won't look all weird, you know, like this. So we'll hold the shift button down. We're going to drag it right about here so it doesn't take up our whole page. Now the fun part is putting uh, text effects in. So usually 
um, I'll put a title and for now um, we're going to click the text tool right here and whenever we type text it will automatically create a new layer so I usually put my font on impact I don't worry about the size because I'll manually resize it later and you can pick whatever color you want so I'm just going to leave it on defaults for this one I'm just going to type in sniper and this will be the name of my video sniper now I want to resize that so making sure we have the sniper layer selected we'll go to edit transform and scale and don't hold the shift button down this time because it's okay to distort the text to get the way you look so we'll just put the word sniper right here and let's make it a little bigger since if you have a longer title you can do more things but we're just going to use one word so we'll put the word sniper there now you can do all kinds of effects to it for now I'm gonna leave it blank and show you kinda of how I bring the text to the front what we'll do is we'll go down to we'll create a new layer Click this button right down here it looks like a little sheet of paper and it creates a blank layer now the layer is blank so you can't see anything but first we want to put it behind the sniper layer because we want to create something behind it that's going to bring the text out more so now we have layer 3 which is a blank layer and it's behind the sniper text so we're going to grab our crop tool here or our selection tool and we're going to make a rectangular um, rectangular selection and then you can use your arrow keys on the keyboard to move the selection up and down where you want so we're gonna get it kinda like just a little smaller than the word sniper so that so that the selection kinda cuts off the top and bottom there and then we're going to go over to our colors here and if you push this little black and white it brings black and white and puts black on the front and that's what you want and then we want to do a fill so making sure you have layer 3 selected and the selection still open the command to do the fill is alt backspace but I think let's see see I know all the keyboard oh here it is you can just hit I think you can just no so okay we don't want to do a fill we just want to do the paint so just push alt and backspace and that will paint in whatever color you have to the selection you have so now we have this black line behind sniper but we want to take the opacity down a little bit so let's take that down to about eighty percent and uh, that'll let you see through it a little bit and it'll still bring the word sniper out let's take it down a little more to seventy percent so now you see we have this black line here and if we zoom out a little bit with the magnifier it's the logo is going to kind of look like this which is pretty cool that you already got a logo with such little work so now let's go back to where we can work on it and the last thing I do sometimes if I want to get fancy I'll select my text layer and uh, I'll go to where you can do effects now usually you can do effects under layer and layer style here it's real self-explanatory you have different things you can do so let's pick drop shadow for example and let's move this up over here so we can kinda see what's happening it's kinda hard I don't have enough room on my screen um, so we'll give it a drop shadow and let's let's just adjust see you can see that this is adding like a drop shadow to the text and you can adjust these options you know to make it more visible so now we've added the drop shadow and if we go in our history you can see before I did that it just looked like this now it has a drop shadow so it kinda brings it out even more you can go even further and add as many effects as you want so we'll go back here and we'll say let's let's also give it an inner shadow so this I usually don't do but this is just an example you can you can give it an inner shadow and kinda of distort it make it look weird I don't like that so uh, one I usually commonly use is stroke and this adds like a black outline you know around the text um, it's not like a drop shadow it's just a black outline which brings it out a little more so if we go to history and we undo the stroke you can see it's very barely visible but on the edge of the S you can see you know that it kinda of brings it out just that much more uh, another one I like to use is the gradient overlay. Um, this you can give your text, you know, oh, my phone's ringing. You can give your text a cool gradient. We'll just pick this one right here and see that adds, that's kind of cool by itself right there. And you can even customize that gradient more. Um, we'll go back to layers and double click on our effects here. Uh, you can actually customize that gradient more but just by clicking on it you can change the colors up like if we can, we can change this to green you know and that's that's gonna give us that 
that um, rainbow effect color there, orange, yellow to green. So that's basically how I do my logos. It's really not that hard. You just got to understand how the layers work and what sizes to use and basically get familiar with Photoshop. And once you do that, you'll be able to create these and you'll be able to do a lot more because this is just a very basic way to use Photoshop, but there's so many more options. Like up here under filter, you can do so many effects. Um, there, and you can just play with these, you know, until you find ones that you like. But um, you, it, there's just so many things you can do with it. But just for thumbnails, I usually just stick to these basic things, you know. Um, you want to put, you know, put the background in, and then put the logo in, put your text in, and find a way to kind of push your text out to the front, you know, so you have your background that doesn't take all the attention. And then uh, once you're done, you want to save it as two files. First, you want to save it um, as your thumbnail and leave it as a PSD. This will make it so you can come back later and edit it if it doesn't look right. And then you want to save another one, so you go to File, Save As, and change this one to a PNG. This is the PNG is going to be the one you actually upload to YouTube, and the uh, PSD is going to be the one that you come back and edit later in Photoshop if you need to. You can also come back and use it as a template and just change the text in the background for different videos. So once you once you have this down, say you have another video, um, you can just highlight the text and and name it something else like. Uh, you know, whoops, you can name it like uh, Pilot, you know, and then you can move the text over if you want. And then you can even do it real quick, just to show you how quick you can, you can go back to an image search on Google, uh, type in Battlefield Hardline, look for a large, larger than four megapixels. You can grab another background, we'll copy this, we'll go down to layer one paste and now we have another background we've just put in here so a totally different logo you know you can change the gradient up maybe change the positioning of the stuff add more text but it's so easy the first thumbnail you do just save it as a PSD so it's your template and you can come back and just completely modify it later so it's really cool the way this works and I hope this helps anybody that watches um, to basically be able to create thumbnails and everything else. So let me know if you have any questions. Just message me on Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And um, happy thumbnail creating. I am out to play some Battlefield Hardline or possibly make a video. Later.